Hi, I'm Craig with Surface Water Solutions. Welcome to our next video in our HECRAS series. This is the second of three videos about terrain manipulation. Now this one's fairly specific. We're going to cover how to get rid of no data values. You may never need this, but if you did have a set of terrain data that came in missing some values, you're not going to be able to use it uh, in HECRAS with a 2D flow area over it. If you have a single no data value, it won't run because you can't, uh, it can't compute a depth at that cell. So I'll show you an example of what we're looking at here. If you had these areas where you have these white spots, um, as you hover around, you'll see values. Um, if you have uh, the terrain as magenta, you'll see values. But when you hover over these white cells, you'll see no value at all. Now, um, you could, if you had this um, terrain or this DEM as an ASC file, for example, you could go in and do a find and replace and get rid of some of the no data values, replace them with some reasonable value. That can be done in any text editor if you have it as an ASC. Now, if you had it as a TIFF file, then it's encoded and it's a little harder to get into, in which case um, you could do it outside of HECRAS in uh, any GIS software, or you could, within HECRAS, make yourself a new geometry to do just that. Um, so this is a little bit of a hack. Um, we're taking the bathymetry tool and we're going to use that to put some uh, terrain underneath this one. So what I'll do here on my geometries, I'm going to create a new geometry and I'm going to call this one uh, 1D no data. And so with that one now, I have a new 1D no data value here um, for a geometry. I'm going to go ahead and make myself a river. Now this obviously is not a river. This is just the center line of the cross sections that I'm going to use to manipulate my terrain. As I edit this geometry, I want to make sure I cover all of my sections here. You can make this any angle you'd like, as long as I've covered each of the things that I'm going to have to replace. Sometimes I do this over the entire terrain if I've got these spread out everywhere. So I've got a no data river here, and uh, the next thing I need is no data bank lines. That's going to give me the lateral extents of this one. So I start editing my bank lines, make sure I've covered well beyond um, the features that I want to get rid of, and I'm going to cover those here, stop editing this, and the last thing I need is a couple of cross sections to define my extents uh, linearly or longitudinally. So with my cross sections uh, being edited, I can go ahead on this command here and draw one cross section here, one cross section here, and now I'm done with my geometry. That's all I need. So I'm going to stop editing this and go straight into my geometry editor here. And with my geometry editor, I need to open up this particular geometry file, um, which I was calling no data. So when I start editing my cross section, I can just blow out all of this data. I'll leave the end station the same so that you can uh, make sure that it keeps the same length. So this 2303, that's the extent of my section. I'll go ahead and blow out all the rest of these values here and paste this one in. And on my elevation, I could make it something close to what I had initially. Um, I can make this anything I want. Um, you don't want it to, uh, to be too far off um, because any flow that spills into these little holes um, will cause you some errors, but at least it will run. So I'll apply this one at the end. I don't care about my bank stations in this case because I'm going all the way out to the edge of my section. So again, I'm just going to make sure that it keeps the same length here, 2017. And I'm going to pull the rest of this out, delete this data stick this in as my second point, and I can put this in at an elevation of 10. Now that I've got this, again, ignore those warnings, I've just got this flat cross section that's going to be overridden, uh, that's gonna override any no data values now. So I'm done with my geometry, save that data, exit out of this, go back into RAS Mapper, and now I'll take my no data uh, geometry here and export this one as um, a geotiff. In this case, I'm going to go all the way out to my, the edge of my cross sections. I'm not going to worry about my bank lines. And here I'll call this no data. So that reminds me that I've blown out my no data values. Now, it's probably best to keep this no data uh, layer the same resolution as your overlying terrain now. So I'm going to make this five meters, which is the same resolution as my terrain. It has now exported this, but I don't see it until I come in here and make myself a new RAS terrain that has that no data with it. Now, before I've gone ahead and put bathymetry on top of my uh, original, which I'll still do, but I need to make sure that my no data value is at the bottom. So I've got bathymetry, which overrides my Brookfield five meter, but then where I've got no data, it's going to see right through in the no data values in my Brookfield five meter here, which is the existing terrain that uh, had the missing data in it. And it will then pull the no data values that I've got in this layer straight up to the top. 
So I'll go ahead and give this one a name, merged uh, bathymetry, no data, just to remind myself what is in this file. So as I create this one again, what it's going to do is see right through these no data values and pull the values from underneath them up. And so instead of a no data value in my merge terrain, I'll actually have some cells there. So I'll close this and go out in here and have a look in there. And we've got no more white areas. So with that, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you do have any questions about it or if you uh, run into any other issues and you'd like to see video tutorials on them, uh, please let me know. And we'll cover dams, levees, roadways, and detention basins, and all sorts of other features in our third video in this series. So tune in for the next one. Thanks.